This is the beginning of a three-year story. It's about research into nanotechnology. A consortium of 15 scientists are beginning to develop a new kind of chemistry. Their story will be unfolded before you, the viewer, as week by week, month by month, they post their video diaries on this website. The idea is this. They take nanotubes and build metal structures of just a few atoms onto the tube's surface. A nanoscale metal knob on a nanoscale tube, nano-squared. We are in the realm of the smallest structures it is possible to build. Billions of these nanotubes are made into a paste, and that is spread thinly onto some electrodes that are printed on a small square of plastic. They believe they can develop this device into the smallest, cheapest and most sensitive device ever made to detect gases, any gases, from dangerous benzene to the smell of ripe apples. But to get there means some groundbreaking fundamental research on two fronts. On the experimental front, three teams are beginning to learn how to control the construction of the metal bumps. They're experimenting with plasmas to get the precise structure they want. On the theoretical front, there are two teams calculating from the most basic physics what these structures ought to do. Calculations involving big computers to find the exact solution to the Schrodinger's wave equation, to predict what final shape these metal atoms will take up when they attach to nanotubes. It's a European Commission funded project. So I'll tell you something about the Commission requirements and procedures. Everybody of you is linked to the Commission by, by a legal contract with uh, obviously legal obligations. The kickoff meeting brought the eight teams together most meeting each other for the first time. I, I like to say that you should consider this as an informal meeting. I hope that uh, within the next two, three years we'll become, we'll become a very good friends because we have been working together to reach some nice scientific goals. So this is informal meeting. Uh, and we're at the Institute of Materials in Nantes. It's a regional... Chris Yules leads a theoretical group in France. Um, our speciality is to very much looking at these, the point defects and the dislocations, how they move. So I'm hoping that we can, there'll be quite a lot of exchange of information so we can feed defect models up to JT and there'll be metal stuff going back. We do a little bit of code development but not um, fundamental code. Mark Delgado is an industrialist who will market the new device. He's based in Barcelona. The company, it's, uh, it was founded by uh, Joaquim Delgado, who is my father. This is my target for, for this project. I want uh, to be at least at this size. If it's possible, smaller, uh, much better. The Louvain group is coming from the University of Catholic of Louvain. So this unit is divided in three main uh, scientific teams. The first one is... Jean-Christophe uh, Charlier leads the second theoretical group in louvain la The second one is focusing on physical chemistry of surface and interface and we belong mainly to this condensed matter theory. Among these seven postdocs, you have Zayla, and we will work in the project. Vega was set up to promote um, science, and we started by... This is Jill Watson, um, the head of Vega. Lectures. It's a charity set up to allow scientists to communicate directly to the public, particularly through TV and Internet. We're developing... Um, a section of the website just for this particular project. And we're making two documentaries. One at the beginning, um, so this is what we're doing um, this week. We're recording a bit about um, how you feel at the beginning of the project and what sort of ideas you've got and ambitions. And then we will um, also make another um, documentary at the end. Yes, I think we had a really interesting meeting yesterday and this is me about video diaries and uh, sort of an ex bbc filmmaker constructing this first video report and the reason i am on the team is because of their decision to tell the public about their science as it happens i pioneered video diaries at the bbc will be produced and how it will look and who will have access You'll see these people reporting their individual successes and failures by tuning in to the Vega website, along with the PhD students. This is the night before, a get-together to celebrate the winning of the research grant. 
and the groups have a chance to experiment with video cameras. Earlier in the afternoon, I gave them some video diary training. They will each have their own camera. They were excited by the idea, but somewhat apprehensive about the time it would take up. I think they are some of the most interesting people I've come across, but you'll be making your own mind up about them. We went to talk to the top men at the European Commission. I wanted them to get behind this web experiment in going public and commit themselves to it. One of the features of this project is to keep the public informed as it goes on. Well, this is, this is a tremendous idea. Uh, uh, certainly all the, the recent projects that we've been uh, funding, uh, have uh, the ones that have got through, have addressed this whole issue, if you like, of, of publicity, of public relations, of telling people what they're doing, because in the past there's been too much of a divide about the scientists on one side and the, the general public on the other, and this is no good for anybody. I think we've got to have proper dialogue. And one of the uh, features of this project that appealed to, appealed to the original evaluators was this, this regular updating, this, this communicating all the time. So I personally, and I'm sure the rest of the team, think this is a, a very excellent idea. More, more projects should do that. But soon it became a film day like nothing I had done before. It was like riding into town with a magnificent seven. The scientists decided they wanted to interview the men of power too. So tell us what you do about uh, what is your background. Did you did a science degree? Yes, I did. Yes, I, I, my degree was in material science and I did a PhD in material science in the University of Sussex, which is one of the British universities. Do you see yourself more like a policeman telling what is right, what is wrong, or more like a mother taking care of everyone being happy? Well, also in one of my last uh, project meetings, uh, it was said, oh, the inspector is coming. In my work before, I was inspecting nuclear installations. In, in this job, uh, I wouldn't see my, my work as, uh, as an inspector. We have to stimulate science and uh, the scientists have their own interest to to do nice projects, to run uh, good projects and to get results. Where's the balance of power in this between you and the projects? Who who's actually finally makes the decisions? And The decision taking, well it's, it's us in the Commission, it's our work programme and, and we decide. <laughs> <laughs> you put your stamp on it. Yeah. We do, we put, our, we put our stamp on it. Um, one of the stakeholders that we haven't really talked about is the public and I wondered if, if you can envisage any way that the public can be more involved in all this decision making. I mean, is there any way that the public get a voice in, in this process? Uh, for the general public, it would be through their national representatives, it would be also possible uh, through uh, associations uh, of industry or of uh, small and medium enterprises where they are uh, uh, members of. So do you film um, science people and doing science. What makes you start into that? they decided to interview me, to ask me what sort of person I was and what I was doing with the project. Uh, the project. Most of our experience here that you're looking at is making documentary films. But I'm quite sure there's something more interesting and more revolutionary and more important to do. The real authors of this and the real hosts of this and the real producers of this should be all of you. I mean, something in my guts tells me it ought to be about quarrels you have, about uh, rewards that you have, about when things go well, about if you're a passionate violin player, we ought to see you playing the violin and we ought to see what life of you eight scientists is like. That's what it seems to me, but that's a big presumption on my part. Tell us a bit about you. Are you married? Uh, yes, I am. This is my first wife. I say first wife just to keep her on her toes. <laughs> <laughs> They're a bunch of enthusiastic young people and they've been thrown together by the project. They're starting to find out about each other and hoping the sparks between them will lead to exciting new breakthroughs. They don't really know where the ride will take them, but there's bound to be friction and disappointments. But they're also a bunch of experts, each in their own field. And although there's a lot they know, there's a lot more they don't. There's bound to be things that don't work, bound to be red herrings on the path. But unlike any other science project, they're going to attempt to take you, the public, along with them on the journey 
and to share the experience of doing science. It's, I don't know, in this case I will see it's like the glue uh, that keeps together uh, these things.